everybody. Sandy here. Today we're working on this 30 ounce skinny from Stainless Steel Depot. It's a hog tumbler and I have prepped it and spray painted it with gray primer. Um, I'm going to be, this first section, we're going to be painting different areas of the tumbler and I have several different colors here. I have a color shift that is uh, black flash and I have a matte finish chalk white paint and then I have a folk art metallic pearl white. Those two will be going together. I do have a jet black apple barrel and then I have um, champagne gold and also rich espresso. Now I'm not sure I'm going to use the gold or this gold I should say. I am going to use a gold but this one may not wind up being it. Once I get my espresso down then I'll see what I need to do. So I want to get started. I have several different paint brushes just a a menagerie of them just so that I can switch out paint brushes as I need to. Now when I'm doing like the whites, I'll do my chalk first and then I'll go right into the metallic and I won't change a brush. All right, I'm going to put a little bit of this color shift onto this paper plate. And I'm not putting a ton, just hopefully enough to give me a couple of good swipes on here. I'm just looking to get myself a band of color and I'm not looking for it to be perfect because I'm not looking to ombre or or do a Milky Way or anything like that. And I don't even, I'm not even worried whether or not it's a straight line. Now this, this tumbler could go one of two ways. This can be a very pretty, very classy tumbler that would appeal to mainly a female audience. Or... It could be done in such a way that you could make this a very manly tumbler. So take this however you perceive it and put your own twist on it.
I do, however, have this gunmetal. And this just has a nice kind of, um, it, it is like a really dark, like a pewter, but it does have a nice finish when it's laid on. So we, we may be using this. And our gold, because I didn't want it to be a flash, flashy gold, we're going to be using some of this Sunkist, and this is from the Glitter Whore store. And we are going to use some white, so also from the Glitter Whore store, we've got So Salty. And that doesn't have the iridescence that some of the whites do. So I'm thinking that this would be safe enough on here. We're not using a lot of this, but so. And if I can find, huh, I don't know, I, I have misplaced some of my glitters and I don't know why I would have done that. But um, we have some other glitters that I'm thinking about putting in here. So we'll see where we sit. We have some other golds as well if we want to use them. But um, we'll be back when it's time to put our glitter on. So stay tuned. This is dry now. It's been drying overnight. And I'm going to target the smaller areas where I'm going to be running some of my glitters. Such as this gold line is going to be a target. Um, you know, my separating lines, I will target those. And then I'll go on to the other spots that have larger areas such as this. I transferred my Mod Podge into um, a ketchup bottle just to make it easier for me because I don't like how the top gets all glunked up. I've put some in a small medicine cup here. And I am going to start putting the Mod Podge on and we're going to do the glitter on each section. And I'm not going to talk all the way through it. I probably will um, speed it up through that so that you don't have to sit for all the boring parts. So we're going to get started. And I truly meant to open my... My white, which, oh, I haven't, <laughs> and I just got it all over me. Yep, that's how glitter goes. Okay. Now, some of these are going to get, some of these glitters, I've got them spread out all over here, but some of these glitters are going to get mixed together, um, and I'll decide that as we go along.
we're back. I have coated this tumbler with one coat of Promarine resin. Um, and I think for the first time in my entire life, I got a completely smooth um, finish, which is kind of weird and exciting to me. But um, so I didn't have to do any sanding. I did clean up around the rim a bit with my X-Acto knife. I just took any extra glitter that was up there along with resin and that'll still have to be cleaned and I'm gonna have to sand that down. But that comes after um, and the edge here is definitely gonna need a little more care. But um, yeah, we got a nice finish on this. So, what I want to show you that I'm going to do next, and I'm going to set this aside, is I've got a paper plate with my parchment on there, and I'm going to show you why. I've got tack it over and over, and I should have grabbed the bottle to show you. This is the tack it over and over. And I have mixed up some this has been in this container for oh quite a while um i do a 70 30 ratio of tacket to water and you don't have to water down your tacket um i just find that it makes it go long go further not longer well yeah that too um but it stores really well so you don't have to fiddle around with all that when you get ready to do something and I'm going to mix it up with a popsicle stick. And that's what we're going to start putting on the tumbler. Now, this is what else I have to show you is we're going to use foils. And I have three different colors. To me, this looks like a rose gold. However, it could be a copper. I can't remember, but we're going to use that. We're going to use some gold color, and this is not gold leaf. It's gold foil, or all of it is foil. And then I have silver, which is in this box. I keep all of it in this box, and uh, I'm going to put my, <laughs> it's going to stick to me. I'm going to put my tacket on. And then I'm going to lay the foil on to my, my tacket sections, and you'll see that. But when I burnish them off, that's what I want this plate for. Because when I burnish them off, those scrap pieces, I keep them and put them inside of a container. That way, if I want to add this to resin to put on another cup, I have it. And I don't care if it's mixed. That's fine by me. So we're going to set this aside and grab my old granny glasses and I'm going to start putting my spots on here we're going to do leopard well cheetah spots actually I think is more like it because I don't intend to do the middles just the outlines of them now you could do this with if I don't stay in frame I'm really sorry I'm really kind of bad at this as far as staying in frame. Um, you can do use vinyl if you, you know, get a pattern off the internet somewhere. But I thought I'd like to try this because I really don't want to have to do the vinyl. And I thought this would be a, a nice look for this. And I am stepping out of my comfort zone, just so you're aware of that. I don't typically do animal prints. I like them. I just, I kind of shy away from them because it seems like there's a lot of work to it. <laughs> I don't like to do a lot of work. But for starters, we're going to, now you could also do this with a paint pen if you wanted to, you could put your own um, animal prints on your tumblers. But, let's see, I better start down here. 
I am just going to tap it out, and I hope you can see that. Oh, I found a spot that's not so, so perfect, but that's okay. It's at the bottom. Um, yeah, none of us are perfect, I know. But I'm just going to kind of pounce on what I deem to be a shape that, that I want. And then once it's dry, and I know there's a lot on there, and I can go back over that just to pull some of it up. And I'm going to. And you just kind of pounce it out. Like I said, none of them are ever perfect. And give yourself like a spot as well. Once this sets up, then I can put my foil on here. And the nice thing about it is you don't have to be like super careful because the spots are never the same all over. They're like snowflakes. These spots are never uniform in the wild say that in the wild. Some are going to be thick, some are going to be thin. Put one in there. And as you can see, it doesn't take a lot of the tacket. And the nice thing is that while you're working on this, as opposed to Mod Podge, while you're working on this, you want this to dry. You want this to, to come up clear. So, it gives you that working time. Sorry, I'm thinking and talking at the same time. Who the heck does that? Me. And you can do bigger or smaller. It all depends on what you're looking for. And because this has several metallics on it, um, I thought using all three of these colored foils would tie in really well. I have several different brushes that I've that I've piled up on my table over here to kind of revert to if need be. Okay. Now, that's not set up yet. But because we're going to be doing the same that I do with my top. Here, I'll, I'll put it over here. Because we're going to be doing the same color foil on here, it's going to be easier for me to just lay the entire sheet on there and pat it down and Tear away what is an overflow and let it sit. Because once it sits for a little while, then I can burnish it off. So we'll start here. Now, silver is not going to go anywhere else. So I probably should have started with the gold, but that's okay. That's okay. I don't want to anything on. I really love this. I don't know why. There's just something about this that makes me happy. <laughs> I 
but you can see this is starting to set up and I'm going to get my my little embossing gun so that I can um, dry this quicker because otherwise it's going to take us forever. There. I'm satisfied with that. Well, if I could hang up my, my gun, I'd be happy. There we go. Now this is all disappeared, which means it's tacky at this point. So I'm going to cover my tacket because I don't want stray pieces. And if you've ever worked with foil, you know that that stuff goes everywhere. It's like glitter. Um, and I'm just going to whoops, take a piece of the foil and I'm going to lay it on there. like that and where the tack it is it's going to stick I know a lot of people like to use the flakes yeah I just find them to be more mess than they need to be I know I say don't stress the mess but if we can save ourselves a little extra cleanup time. I say, why not? Okay. So we, oops, I've got a piece down there that needs a little extra love. I can feel the tackiness underneath. And where it tears away, you know, you just, if you go back with your finger, you're gonna be able to feel where it's tacky, where it's not. Because is this foolproof doing it this way? No. I mean, maybe you have a better way of doing it, and that's great too. Whatever works for you works for me. Okay, I'm putting that back into the container because I didn't get really, really small spots. But I think this really does cut down on the humongous mess that we get when we do foils. <laughs> yep, see that? I am going to make sure that I have all of my tacky spots covered with this foil, or as many as I can find. As you can see, it's not sticking over here because there's there's no tack it there. So, this really is not a bad method. Okay, that's on there. I'm going to attempt to clean off my hands with a dry paper towel. There we go. And I'm going to just go alongside and knock down what I can because I don't want the little pieces to come flying off and go into the tacket that I am going to put in other locations.
Okay, we've let this sit about 10 minutes and I have gone in with this brush, which is kind of a, well, it's sort of stiff, but not super stiff. And I've just started rubbing away at my foil. I'm going to show you over here. You can see that it does dull the foil, but that's not a problem. It'll come back up to nice and shiny after we epoxy again, just like when we spray our glitter, it gets dull. Um, and you can see that some spots don't necessarily clean up as well as others. And I'm pushing right in here. I mean, it's not taking away anything that we purposely wanted there. So I'm giving it, I'm, I'm giving it hell. But you'll find that there's some spots that because the resin is so easy for it to stick to, that it wants to continue to stick. You get to those spots, and, and I'll do that cleanup later. I'm not going to do that now. But I'll show you quickly what you can do. Like right here, there's this spot is kind of together. You just kind of run your knife a little bit over it. You don't have to dig in there. You just barely have to touch it. And it comes right up. back. I've cleaned this all up and I'm going to just spin this so that you can see the different parts of it. And it didn't take me very long to clean up. So I've mixed up about 25 milliliters of epoxy and I mix it like crazy so I have bubbles in it, which I'm not thrilled with, but I didn't really feel like taking my time. So I did what I had to do. So I'm going to go ahead and put this coat on and we'll see how it reacts with this. I do want to point out that when I did put the first coat of epoxy on this, I started with the white section while the lighter section first and got that all covered to make sure that I wasn't going to pull anything from the black or from the gold over there because I did not spray this. I've been finding that when I put um, my clear matte spray over top of glitter that I have done with the Mod Podge method, I'm finding that I'm getting these little tiny micro bubbles that want to stay into the glitter. No, thank you. I don't want that. So that's what I, I did to get this covered for its first coat. And I also want to point out that I used about 50 milliliters of resin to cover this uh, 30 ounce cup because it was raw glitter. Perhaps my gold foil is not coming back to its original state. Um, and I'm okay with that. Okay, we're going to let this 
sweet lady turn and we'll be back to inspect and see how we did and discuss whether or not we had any sanding to do but I'm I'm pretty happy with this even though my foil is now somewhat dulled I still think it looks cool so stay tuned we'll be back and we'll talk about what needs to be done next she's all finished isn't she pretty I hope you enjoyed this video as much as I enjoyed making it for you I did not have to sand again um, other than the top rim and I really feel like she came together but I appreciate you spending time with me and if you made it all the way to the end you are a trooper until we meet again thank you and toodles <laughs>